Thursday, was it Thursday? We did this one. This was the taste test to see which glue to use. Remember when we did the inlay on this? So we inlaid it with copper and we polished the turquoise. So that was that. So this one, if you forgot what it looks like, this is what it looks like. It looks like, it looks Looked like. And well, the underneath looks like this. So under this is that. So hopefully turquoise stuck, everything is stuck. You know, yesterday was Father's Day. Hope you all had a wonderful Father's Day. Um, so my dad was over the house and so my dad says, let me see that ring. And I said, dad, I actually brought it home because I wanted to see how it was, how the epoxy was curing. So I showed it to him. So he's at the dinner table analyzing it with his glasses. He carries those glasses around everywhere, you guys. And he looks at it and he's like, hmm, you know, Ani, that bezel is a little thin to be doing inlay. And I'm like, I know, Dad, I didn't make the ring. We just, this is, this is what it is. And he's like, all right, he goes, I'll be watching tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, my God, Dad. But he was saying, he's like, he wished that the bezel was thicker, just like this one. He says, this one is good. He goes, this one was a decent size depth of the bezel right here. You guys remember this one that we did? So he says this one was good, but he's saying in comparison, this one is a little on the thinny side. So we're going to have to grind this super flat. So you guys, today is the day we're going to grind it down. So I'm excited and um, hope so hopefully all will work out well. Um, I want to wish uh, a happy birthday wishes to Sally Hoffman. It's Sally Hoffman's birthday. I think it was over the weekend. Uh, but when I saw the post, it was this morning. So happy birthday week, Sally Hoffman. How about that? Happy birthday to you. I wish you a year filled with joy, good health, and happiness. Mwah. Happy birthday, Sally. You're a sweetheart. And now, if all you guys don't know who Sally is, she's so cute. She actually made this really pretty piece. I actually screenshot it because she's so cute wearing it. So this is Sally Hoffman. And the piece she wore, when I said it's gorgeous, Sally, she said, I, hashtag, I love my jewel tool. <laughs> so she made this gorgeous turquoise piece, and it was just beautiful. thought I'd share that. So, all right. So, you guys, we are going to get started. Um, I just want to say hi to everybody who's joined in. Yeah, We've got Deborah, Nicole. Oh, Nicole, don't worry. I'll be signing that apron to your little girl, Beans. I'm so excited. Robin. So, uh, hi, Robin. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Linda. Welcome, welcome on this Monday afternoon. Hi, Claire from the UK. Hi, Penny Horton. Hi, Myra. Becky, hi. Hey, Bonnie. Well, welcome, Tom Elms, and welcome, Suni. Hi, everybody. Hope you guys had a fabulous weekend. Hi, Ava Phillips and Barbara. Hi, Betty and Kathy. Oh, all my favorites are here. Kathy Hi, Kathy Dalton. Deanna Schnitzka. Hi, Deanna. Hi, Sunny Girl from YouTube. Hey, we got some uh, new ones coming. I know, you guys, these videos are growing. So I appreciate all the my, my publicists out there. You guys really are my PR people for tagging um, and telling everyone about my videos on other posts. I really appreciate it, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It means the world to me. So if I can help any more people, I, I would love to. So some people didn't know I was doing videos, so I appreciate you guys spreading the word. Thank you. Hi, Carol Barnett. And Carolyn Moran. Hey. Hashtag I love my jewel. So you're so cute, Carolyn Moran. I love you. So, okay, you guys. So today is a continuation of grinding this um, turquoise bezel ring that we had done on Friday. So I glued, I crushed it, I glued it, and we went ahead and let it cure over the weekend. So this was the epoxy I used. Um, I used the JB Weld five minute epoxy. And so I was just telling you guys, I don't know who joined in, but my dad was over yesterday for Father's Day. So at the dinner table, he wanted to see the ring. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I have it, dad. So he looks at it. He goes, 
epoxy dried good and then he like puts his glasses on you know those i don't know if you guys noticed so he's a so he takes a look at it and he's like you know ani that bezel's a little thin so hope it hopefully when you grind it <laughs> there's turquoise still there so you guys so my dad is an experienced master jeweler. And so if you guys missed this post, this post that I did on Instagram with my daddy, this one, hold on, let me show you. This one, everyone, thank you so much. You guys gave me so much love showing. Like my, This was the picture I posted for Father's Day with my dad. And a lot of you guys asked, what are the glasses he's wearing on his head? These are awesome glasses with the flip so they're they're magnifiers so they're nice because you can wear your own glasses under you can clip them on or just wear the ones that have nothing under and they're very lightweight my dad says like he had them with him so he put them on and he's like looking at this at the dinner table it's an exclusive source it's very like um so let me know if you guys are interested i have them on my website because um it's something that my dad was raving about yesterday and i go dad a lot of people keep asking about them he's like you should tell them so many people don't know how good these are and i'm like okay dad so you guys just so you know those these magnifying glasses are on my website and they're available for they're in the new product section and they're they come in uh two times 2.25 times and 2.5 magnification you guys and i put them as an introductory sale price so you guys if you're interested in these doodads they're really cool and they're very lightweight my dad loves them that's my daddy uh, so he had them in his pocket and i love heidi heidi noticed and he has like even more glasses in his pocket and a pen that's so my dad you guys you don't understand that's so my dad. He's always prepared, like puts them on and looks at them at the dinner table. Anyways, so you guys, if you're interested in those glasses, they're available on my website. There you go. All right, so you guys, without further ado, we're going to grind this turquoise down. So I'm going to grab, just to err on the side of caution, I'm going to grab the fine uh, flex diamond. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's the one with the... The it's this one that's marked fine. You can hold on. It's the fine of the extra course collection of the flex diamond. I'm gonna keep that here and flash it overhead. Now I gotta find mine. Great. Thanks, Ani. Yeah, so this is there you go. Mine is really worn. Just want you guys to see that. So let me get uh, go ahead and grab some water, Yarrow. Do you know where my tray is? left my tray here you see right there oh that's a tray that's good enough good enough it's fine so i have water right here yarrow yeah so I'm gonna let's clean this it's awfully saturated with some something i ground down so if you want to clean that up this is all you do and it kind of releases you see how it just kind of releases what was in here and if it's really heavily like locked in there just you can grab like a little toothbrush to kind of loosen it no it's fine y'all it's fine so there we go so it's pretty good this one's a little bit saturated but you can see even with my little nail i can just pop those off and you can clean it up who knows what i was grinding this was probably at a show who said this Hi, Carol Barnett. She says, thank you for doing these classes. It's my pleasure, you guys. You know, and I, I feel like you guys are taking the journey with me. As I've said before, you guys, I have not ever in my life inlaid crushed turquoise. Never. Oh, it's Cindy. Oh, I, okay. So uh, so what was her name? on? How Sunny Girl on YouTube is Cindy Lee Collins. So Cindy, I'm going to do a show probably tomorrow to address your magic buff, how to clean it properly and how to use it properly. So Cindy posted something on our Jewel Tool group, the Jewel Tool community. And Cindy, this has not fallen on deaf ears. I'm going to show you how to remedy that situation and, be and hopefully it will be helpful to others. So let's get started. Here it goes, you guys. So let's take a little look-see at what we've done. So 
right here it's little raised i did extra raised because i really wanted to make sure that all those particles lodged into that small area that we had granted it is thin my dad was right so if you are going to do inlay i suggest doing a deeper bezel like this one was way deeper than this look how thin this is in comparison so this one worked out great and this is the one we did last week hi hi to everybody remember we did half um uh, crazy glue and half epoxy and we chose that the epoxy was the better deal so you guys let's take a look so we're gonna go ahead and grind off all the inlay crush that the crushed turquoise inlay and hopefully something good will make out so i can't do a dome like i kind of did with this see this one has a dome because i need to expose the inside j so hopefully all will work out well let's get started so i've got the fine grinding diamond on add some water here we go and just hold it right there oh let me put the vacuum on so i'm just lightly holding it we don't want to do it we don't want to push too hard kind of see what's happening so we're grinding it down so we're grinding right here look how beautiful and even that is so this is what we've done so far do you see that how even and flat it's gotten see so we're gonna keep going that's lovely so far it's kind of looking pretty cool you guys want to see here I'll, let's show you so right here too we've ground that down we're kind of hitting metal so it's going to be pretty fast you guys just so you know already we're here at this level do you guys see that that's pretty cool huh that is so cool i'm hoping it looks good you guys so let's keep going Yeah, let's do the side view. See how nice and even it is? Lovely. And you can watch and see the transition as things are happening. And so we're getting closer to the uh, metal, you guys. So you guys want to see what's happening? Oh, let's do overhead. So let's go ahead and just grind a little. So something is becoming exposed, you guys. Oh my God, you guys, it's happening. It's happening. Okay, sorry, I've got to... I am so excited, Nicole, too, to see it. Nicole says she's so excited to see this puppy. So, so am I. So I'm just keeping it flat, you guys. I'm not changing the shape. So now I'm just going to tread with caution. welcome back holly okay so we're getting we're getting near the silver so this is where when you start getting flush with your bezel you know kind of tread with caution i kind of might use the coarse diamond yeah i'm getting close you guys and so far it's looking pretty cool. Can you guys see the J? The little J for jewel tool. Look at that. Okay, so right now, you guys, what I don't want to happen is, since this is aggressive, see how beautiful that is? And again, once this gets cleaned up, beautiful fresh diamond is exposed. Isn't that lovely? So I don't want to put too much scratches on the silver. As you can see, we're getting really close to the bezel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our coarse turquoise. And I did this that time on the other inlay piece. So there you go. So I, I, you don't need to use the four inch, you guys. I just can't find my three inch. I keep saying this every day <laughs> because I'm, I'm telling you I haven't fixed it and done it. So I'm going to run this at medium speed. So your four inches you need to run not at high speed, just bring it down a quarter so it's a medium speed, quarter of a turn. And so let me go put the vacuum on. So we're at this level, you guys see right there. And so now we're going to go ahead and grind it. Yes, so basically I'm going to use the steps for the soft stone. And 
so right here it looks like I'm grinding a lot of the metal you guys see that the little so I'm, I'm getting there you guys I'm just really treading with caution at this stage we've come this far I don't want to really grind I don't want to push hard so I'm kind of letting the diamond do all the work super nice and even give yourself some water or else it's looking I'm, I'm so pleasantly surprised so far you guys thank you oh shoot I lost one I knew it I knew it one of the one of the one of the uh, metal flew off man it made a hole it's okay we can always go back and refill it okay here it goes it's starting to yeah I'm pumped it's okay so this is why I said don't push hard just let it grind you see with the four inch by the way you can really see all the way into the inside so you guys see how it's totally revealing everything and there we go oh my god that looks so pretty you guys what do you guys think what do you guys think look how even and flat that is what do you guys think talk to me people this is so cool so it did turn out pretty good however I'm a little bummed right now I saw one piece of uh, copper fly off right there but that's something we can repair easily just a quick little something but I'm gonna keep going because my objective is to show you the steps and again to r clean this up all you do is this and keep going you see that how expo exposes the diamond so I really like that we've gone this far this has come out pretty so we can use now we're gonna go down the grade of the diamond so I'm gonna use the medium diamond of course I have the three inch so run this at full speed thank you Marge thank you guys for the love so this is at the medium and you can see the shine do you see how do you guys see the fluidity of the flat honest to God could you imagine hand filing this you couldn't even do this on a conventional lapidary system because number one you're working on wheels that are round you know so you'd have to definitely use some sort of flat lap system but just look at that what in the I'm so excited you guys thank you Nicole she says fantastic thank you Betty Gray I know I'm kind of excited Betty Bray beautiful okay so thank you Betty Bray I appreciate Bonnie says looks pretty I know right you guys I'm so like I'm s I got to contain myself, but I want to scream. So is that wrong of me wanting to scream? Like, like I was so, w I stared at it over the weekend, you guys. Like, you guys see that post? That post I did was outside on Friday. I took it home to stare at it. Like, literally, you guys. So this is going to. Now, yes. So if I, d yes. So Deanna, I, listen. It's true. I did. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look at you. So you guys remember when I told you how diamonds polish metal really pretty, but I told you it's a, just an expensive way to polish metal. But I told you that um, one of my, um, what do you call it? One of my uh, manufacturers who does a lot of, I'm going to grind the glue off just so you know. Um, oh, I could use a scotch bright. What am I doing? I can use a scotch bright for this yeah oh it's coming off whatever so one of my di uh, manufacturers who works on um, platinum loves the diamond wheels so you see how I have all that extra um, glue so I'm just kind of trimming it off just on the fine you can use the scratch eraser you guys if you don't want to use your diamond just a little note you can use your scratch eraser to remove it I'm just being like lazy could you imagine Betty Betty said no way would you want to file that by hand well you'll be surprised out there these people are sufferers they love to what's that what's that feeling of 
when someone wants to self um, punish themselves, <laughs> what's that? What's that term? Masochist. There's a lot of jewelers out there that are masochists. Oh, should I actually? I could have done better. Right? Okay, so this is at the fine, you guys. Not bad, huh? So just look at, okay, so remember I told you how the diamond works on a metal. It works phenomenal. But you see how we're doing both diamond and the, the uh, silver at the same time. So honestly, so Diana, Diana Schnetzka said, did I have to put silver uh, oh, I mean like inlay copper. No, I could have left it all turquoise and it seems like the turquoise because it was smaller like that one didn't lodge very well like held on the glue better but I just want you know me I'm more is more and Diana you know you're the red lip lady you love those red lips more is more so it doesn't hurt to try all else fails you guys I can always put a little piece of silver or even another turquoise in there put a little glue and then grind it down it won't be as you know much work as the whole thing so that was the fine you guys and you see how it's doing the metal and the gold and it really at this stage as long as you remove it you see some of the black off my finger if you remove it you should be fine and it won't transfer onto the next one so you should be you don't worry about this so if you follow all the steps in the kit on the screen you'll have a phenomenal finish just like me so basically everything that is on the screen is what I'm being used that is being used so I'm gonna go ahead and again follow it flat put my vacuum on and just hold it so we're just masochist or martyr I love it so I'm gonna do it oh my god you guys this is not so yes How sh who said that Cindy Cindy Lee said she's happy to see oopsies happen to me before too now you guys thank you oh, look at that very fine let's just stop for a moment let's have a moment of silence look at this it's just divine you guys look how flat that is look at this finish glutton for punishment yes so Cindy says that she's happy to see like oopsies happen to me oopsies are gonna happen no matter how good you are or whatever but you have to figure out a way to figure uh, fix the oopsie and I'm doing this because I want you guys to take the journey with me because when the oopsies happen I can show you guys how to fix the oopsie yeah so just real quick you guys I love that she said she loves when oopsies happen to me I so I like to do things I've never done before because when the oopsie happens to me, I can at least go back into my, you know, treasure bank here and figure out the solution so you don't have to suffer and figure it out. My knowledge is way more vast than you on the abrasives. No, it's true. And so I can remedy, yeah, I can remedy the solution faster than you and that way you'll eliminate any of the struggle so you all you have to do is enjoy the fun and the process and you guys so far ah! did I say ah enough oh my god look at this you guys when I say look at how the light is following it's like you just want to stare at it more and more it's came out so pretty you guys so I'm I'm just ecstatic calm down Ani. let's get through this all we have to do is pretty much just polish it now now so who so pretty so you yes some of her best pieces she says have come from happy accents so what I'm gonna do so this is the very fine and so we've addressed all the turquoise now I want to address the epoxy you guys so addressing the epoxy is gonna be with my very fine um, nine micron uh, micro finishing film and I was just about to pull it off and put a new one and I said wait 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 let me first show you guys how to do this so basically I'm pulling it off and when you want to start just stick your nail or any kind of sharp device if you don't have nails so all you need to do is just grab like a little lip do you guys see that so when you grab a little lip get a good foothold and hold the cushion down and pull so you're gonna do this across the whole and then if so see there you go and if you do have 
So all you want to do is pull off the abrasive, not the cushion. And if you have any remnants, this came off pretty clean, you can actually do this. But if there is remnants on it, you guys, some come up with a clean layer of like uh, of, of glue. Leave that glue on because the 3M PSA is designed to melt and conformulate, fuse, fuse, fuse back to itself. Yara says, don't try to invent words. <laughs> and this is the worst part of all, finding this, especially when you have no nail on this finger. But there, I got it. Work with me. It's bent, but my nail, I have no nail to grab. So when you do it, just pull it off, give it a good tug. And so I like to, before, I, when I put them on, I'm always looking for, I call it the hook. The hook right here. Do you guys see? I call it the hook. So I bend it like this. You guys see how I've kind of created it like a little wing? So I find the hook here and I, I stay near the center. So here is where I play. Before I mount it, I kind of adjust it up here and I kind of see, oh, I'm about right here. That's about right. And so before I smash it, I look. If I have to make any adjustments, I can push and move. But other than that, this looks pretty good. And just tap, tap, tap everywhere. And so now you, well you have to make sure all the corners, especially these corners, are all sticking to the cushion. So do you guys see the difference between something that is little, uh, uh, little pressed versus completely making contact with the cushion? So this is good. This is what you want it to look like. This is not. So you want to take your finger and press it on. And the corners are especially. I always make sure those corners are pressed down. Because if you're working on something sharp, it might be a little bit loose and catch. So there you go. And that's pretty much it. Any air bubbles you see, smash those suckers down. And we are good to go. So this is the micro finishing film. And it tells you on it to run it at slow speed. You guys see that? Slow speed. All right, there you go. So where'd my ring go? Oh, there it is. So I'm going to run it at slow. And so my objective is to... The metal's already nicely done. It's I'm pretty much wanting to give the epoxy a finer finish. Does that make sense? So this is for the epoxy. Nothing more, nothing less. This is for the good old epoxy. There you go. And that's that. Again, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, you guys. So cool or faster. However, I still have some glue here and I should address this. So to get rid of the glue, I'm not going to waste my lovely micro finishing film. So I will go back to my scratch eraser. So I'll just use the fine or the very fine. It doesn't matter. Just stick to something really fine. And so I'm just going to kind of glide it right here. Let me show you guys. I'm just wanting, oh no, wrong pen. So I just kind of want to touch where there's glue. Actually, there's not that much glue. I don't know what I'm thinking, but whatever. Just a little quickie zippity doo da, and you're good to go. See, look at that precision. Oh, the precision, people. There you go. Just a little bit of zippity doo da. There I am. Yeah, there was a chunk there. I got rid of it. Beautiful. There we go. And then now we're going to polish. Ta da! So pretty. Okay, so you guys, when remember, so this was the felt I used last week during my show. All right, guys? So I'm going to actually clean this real quick. And remember how I showed you? Oh, Kristen, can I have that block of wood? I gave Kristen my block of wood. Or anything would be okay. It's okay. I have actually one. This is good enough. So I'm just going to put some sandpaper underneath it and just kind of sand it down a little. You see how it's taking off any kind of yuckiness? You just want to keep it nice and even. Thank you for the new paper, Yaro. And do you see how it's coming? It's getting cleaner. So here was more concentrated. Eh, I'm good. That's fine. Super, yes, yeah, super light touch. Thank you, Kristen. Yes, Marge. Absolutely. Marge just asked, 
was it a super light touch on the micro finishing film absolutely and you can see how it took the metal do you guys see the metal remnants on this right here that's it just a super light touch you don't want to do much just need to kind of give that oh my god you guys this is amazing so right here look at this we're clean see we're clean so now you can go ahead oh here's a little tip if you guys ever want to polish something and don't really want to use like the buff to polish you can leave your um, felt a little without compound and watch this like if you run it without compound this is kind of what it looks like it'll give you that extra shine especially since we had the micro finishing film so the surface was pretty pretty already done so if you're not looking to work with a lot of compound this is a really like quick way to polish but the surface has to be already prepped for a polish you guys see that and then or if you just want a little bit just give yourself a little zhuzh and it'll give you that little extra zhuzh but still give you that extra shine you guys see that are you blinded? Woohoo! Blinded by the light. Isn't that a song? Wow, look at that, you guys. Can you imagine doing this by hand? Forget that. So we're good. Oh my God, I think we're better than good. Damn, Gina, this is good. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave it just like so. Before I use my uh, compound, my little really clean one, I'm going to address the outside and polish the outside with my felt wheel. So just to give you an idea, this is the one for stone. And again, if you want to clean that up one more time, you can, and it'll be ready to use on stone again. So this one, you can go back and forth with a little bit of metal and clean it up. It's this one that uses, like you're des designating this for metal, that you don't want to sand this down because this has a lot of metal in it. Okay, so I have a couple quick questions. Yes, so the what we, we stop, question time. Do we run scratch erasers at high? If you don't know what a scratch eraser is, let me show you real quick right here. These are the scratch erasers. So whether you're using the coarse, medium, fine, very fine, these are gonna be run at high speed. This is the three inch. Now, if you have the four inch size, which is right up here, thank you. Um, so do you see how this is smaller? So these are the four inch. These are going to be run at medium speed because of the size. They create more inertia and they pick up a lot of speed. So medium speed, high speed, medium speed, high speed. You got that? So three inch run at high, four inch run around medium speed because the medium technically like the uh, like I said, the inertia picks up so much speed. You're pretty much running it almost at the same. So bring all your four inches slower. Yes, it's a larger, wider diameter. So you guys, we're here already. Ah, I can't, you guys. I just can't. You see, it's like blinding you right here. Boom, 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 boom. So there. So I am going to now polish the side. So let's get started. We have another question. Okay, so Lynn, that's a good question. Lynn is confused on what felt wheel to use, the felt from the stone kit or the felt in the metal kit. Let me bring it down in like kind of layman's terms. So bring that camera over here again, Yaro. So with your um, diamond stone kit, you're gonna get a felt wheel with the compound, okay? So these felt wheels, whether it's the metal one with the compound or the stone one with the compound are identical. So you can put, like you can write on it. I think I have one written here, stone or something. You can writ write stone on it here. For example, during a, during a class, we, ha we had written stone on one. So you can allocate and designate one for stone and one for metal. Oh. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, she wants to know which one you use if you have both metal on your stone. So that's why I showed you, Linda, if you do get, Lynn, 
if you got some metal then on your felt that's why I showed how to sand it down with a block of sandpaper so you remove you see how there's some more uh, you remove the extra and then they'll start getting cleaner so when it's not heavily saturated with metal it's a really quick little sanding process to take off any kind of surface layer of metal but if you have one allocated for metal this is a lot of metal to sand down you're going to be sanding quite a bit of your felt unnecessarily so that's why I always recommend use one for metal and use one for stone so the one that usually you use for stone I have a little metal on it you can definitely tell and differentiate the differences you guys see so use the one that has the lighter tone for your stone and inlay okay yes so but and then use the one that is heavily saturated with metal exclusive for metal projects so right now since we're going to be polishing the outer rim of the bezel that I had put the scratch eraser on which is metal I'm going to use the heavily saturated felt for the metal with the metal pieces there you go so here we go so let's go ahead and turn this on at full speed give yourself a good amount of compound beautiful you are so welcome Lynn so now I'm just going to polish the sides you guys see that nice good job thanks Kat I'm glad I helped answer thank you so I'm just polishing the outer rim outer edge of the bezel and that should do it everything else is polished let me just wipe any kind of compound that flipped over get off thank you for liking my explanation I hope that helped yeah anytime you guys have a question anytime you have a question you guys I am happy to answer this is what these are for this show is not to say look at what I can do this whole show is to show you what you can do and how to achieve it so let me put my lights on yes so with both the stone and the metal you use compound absolutely I just gave you a little trick of the trade if you wanted an extra pop of shine you could avoid some a you can put very little compound if not any to give that extra shine so like always I told you you guys remember the inside is always going to be clean it's going to be like I would say like um, compound free so if you want to clean up some of that compound we don't have any but if you do I told you guys last time just go and slide into the inner part of the of the wheel and get an extra shine of yeah can you do that you're all hurry I'm running out of so you can polish here you guys see that and then you can slide in and get that extra extra shine compound free I would say is that good okay there you go yeah there you go there you go there we go and we're done Ooh -hoo! just kind of get rid of any kind of compound on the edges there we go that's all good so you guys honestly so from here so this is without a buff oh Yara says let it focus so this polish is oh my oh my oh my oh my oh my look at the fluidity oh my god oh okay so I'm gonna take that same clean buff that I had that I have compound and I'm gonna run it at full speed so I want to just put a little bit of my compound on it okay so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a polish just for extra gleaming power not too much we just want a little extra gleaming power are you guys with me so if there just a little extra gleaming power and there we go let's go ahead and just wipe that down a little there we go any kind of extra compound there's not that much so that's where we're at you guys 
And that was it. See, it's extra gleaming. So you see how it's a little bit more. It takes you to a whole other level, that little cotton buff. You know, and again, remember, our buffs are not saturated with compound. We want to use this lovely cotton to give us that extra gorgeousness. So there. Yes. So you guys, there's no. Yeah, I, you guys, to be honest with you, I didn't think that this is going to come out this good. I kind of, kind of got a little worried when my dad said, "Hey, Ani, um, that's a thin bezel," and I'm like, "Why do you say that, Dad?" <laughs> like, it's like almost I was in denial. Like I knew it was a thin bezel, but you know how you tell yourself that it's going to work. But I guess the powers that be, when you tell yourself that it's going to work, you know, it works. So. Here's something to learn, you guys. Even if the world is telling you that's not going to work, that's a really thin bezel, keep the faith. Keep the faith, guys. Stick to what you guys. Thank you, guys. I feel the love. Y'all is telling me all your comments. Thank you so much. So there we go. So nice and even all the way across. We didn't compromise any of the shape, the thickness of the bezel. Everything stayed true to the original. And yeah, the, the after shank, I really didn't do much to it. If anything, you can just hit it with a little light buff. I can even use that same one. Or you can use your magic buff, whichever one you want. This one just seems to be right here. So Yaro says he wants to take an after picture. So this is what I'll do. Just kind of give yourself a little extra polish. Do you see that? And so this is what I'll do. Save me the trouble of doing it later. So I am so excited, you guys. Did you, could you tell I was like holding my breath? I'm like, oh my God, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. You can do right here a little bit. There we go. Thank you. Look at that. So pretty. Yeah, it came out really pretty. I'm so digging this. So there, now Yaro can take an after picture since I polished the shank. Hold on, let me go ahead. Where are you going to do front cam? Okay, so you guys. <coughs> Sorry. Control yourself, Ani. Just control yourself. So, you know, the power of, of course, I didn't, I didn't even put finger things on, and that's it. So, you guys, it's not focusing, Yara. Yara's trying. It's okay. Don't get that close. Maybe that's what's happening. There you go. And then we have the super flatness at the top. There you go. Look at that. Woo! I think I'll just wear it. It fits my finger, you guys. Isn't that so pretty? <laughs> You know what's cool? So this was done just for a jewel tool presentation. But I thought, like, how cute would that be to put someone's initial and then do inlay around? Because technically that is like an organic J forget it jewel tool. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but how cute would that be to do a customized piece? Like, talk about something that nobody has. Nobody has this. Nobody. Did I say nobody has this? Nobody has this. Really. I think I'm the only one on earth that has one right now. <laughs> and you know what's funny is every time you create a piece, you know, no two will definitely not be alike. I could assure you this. So, you know, whether you want to do something like the one we did as an experiment or something like this, they have two different looks. One is way flat with an inlay, and this one is more dome, more conventional. Yes, Myra said my scream was in a dolphin frequency. It was. It was like a sh 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 shriek. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know. So, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this journey, and I thank you for taking the journey with me, because honestly, you guys, I had no idea how it's going to turn out. But, you know, we did a little trial and error on one piece, and we learned that the epoxy definitely was the way to go. But I honestly think, you guys, remember how I said first, since it's so tiny, some of my particles to get into all that little nooks and crannies because of the J? Remember how I said 
that I'm going to first put the super glue to kind of secure all those loosey goosey ones at the base and then apply the um, what's it called apply the uh, epoxy to the rest and kind of smash it all in I really think that's a way to go so during this process we actually discovered something that nobody has ever told you well we discovered it together so if you guys watch part three that's Friday's show and that shows how I put the super glue towards the bottom to anchor those smaller particle, those part, uh, those smaller turquoise crushed pieces, and then it made putting the epoxy on top so much easier. And this way, I didn't have to I put every like I, I laid out the foundation in my design ahead of time, and then once I put the epoxy, they had kind of held with the super glue down below so it made it easier you guys saw that you guys saw you you know what i'm talking about yes thank you i appreciate thank you very much judy craig said um she appreciates the class and uh, and loves the bloopers these are bloopers this is real life scenario even i can get past them it happened so again that one little piece that flew off all i have to do is just put kind of I would just to clean it up I would kind of probably take my small little diamond burr drill it a little and then put another glue uh, another piece in there and just let it sit overnight and then try it just light little touch overhead and you're good to go that is true Tom negotiator on YouTube says Jules will take your finished projects to the highest value highest level it's true you guys uh, you know something was funny so Lucy Walker I told you guys Lucy Walker has these amazing online classes and she has a f like a, s a complete school in Malaysia so I know a lot of people that have taken her classes and I just find her to be an excellent jeweler and a great teacher um, and so she did a post over the weekend on her jewel tool and so many people she's got a lot of followers so so many people are saying I love my jewel tool. I love you, my jewel tool. I love, love, love. Oh, can't do without mine. La, 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 la. And then some people are like, hmm, I don't know if that machine really does everything it says. I don't know. Does that polishing machine do this? So there's a lot of skeptics out there, you guys. And so my answer to them was, well, it does all the hand filing for you. It does all the burnishing for you. It does all the polishing. And you can do it accurately because you can see right through the wheel. And I go, also, ask yourself, how often do you hear anyone saying, I love my buffer? I'm just going to leave it just like that. Anyways, you guys, so, um, yeah, this came out good. I'm excited. Thank you guys for all the support and encouragement. It, you know, it took a village. So I just want you guys to know I am uh, super pleased with the results. So cool. You guys, you don't understand. Like, what's cool is you guys when you see it in person so do you guys see all those like where the lights hitting when you see it in person those are like areas that are like that uh, that were not filled but yet they're super polished so they kind of look like they give it extra depth to the inlay i don't know how to explain it but i'm going to try to capture that in the video that yara is going to take after because everything when you look at it is so even so it's flush and beautiful. So it kind of looks like you're looking into. I love it. Claire says, I love my buffer, but my buffer is my jewel tool. I know, isn't that cool? Yeah, but do you know? That's right, not a toy, people. <coughs> Speaking of not a toy, I think, I, I think one of the uh, lapidary groups um, banned me. It's true. It's true. I posted this and it got so many mm, comments and I went back to look for it and I couldn't even find it anymore. Just saying. I can say you guys are like my girlfriend. <coughs> oh, Heidi. Heidi. It's okay, Heidi. Just watch the replay. I pretty much was holding my breath during the grind because I was like, <gasps> what's going to happen? But it was smooth sailing. Everything was good. 
and I pretty much did all the steps I did when we did this one. So watch it again, Heidi, and if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Oh my God, it was so funny, Heidi. My dad was right next to me yesterday when you sent me that message of, Heidi's the one, I said it earlier in the presentation, I go, Heidi noticed my dad wearing these uh, glasses, not, uh, and then he, she noticed that there were additional additional uh, glasses and a pen in his pocket. And also you guys have asked about, I said it earlier, about the glasses, the magnifiers he's wearing on top. So this is a complete set. So there, um, there, there's no lenses in his glasses and these little things, it's like a half, and these um, come over and you can just remove them. They're very lightweight and they're lovely to wear. And so they're on my website, you guys, if anyone is interested. A lot of people ask me for those. Um, and so, yeah, I, I know the manufacturer and they're lovely. And they come in uh, two times, 2.25 <laughs> times and 2.5 times and they're on sale. So I have them up on my website if you guys are interested. They're lovely. Because you know what my dad used to always do? You know, he, was, he ran a business. So he didn't want that heavy optivizer on his head. So he was not an optivizer kind of guy. So, <coughs> so he always liked the idea of flipping them up seeing everything and flipping them down and but he liked the comfort of wearing like gla lightweight glasses he never liked the bands that went around your head he found those to be like uh, they would give him headaches he just didn't like them and you know they didn't look as cool everyone who met my dad and he had those flips he has like a, there's a different look to you when you wear those like you kind of know which you know you know your thing you know so anyways so those are very lightweight and convenient i'm actually going to be having a pair here for myself whenever i really need to see instead of always looping it if i can just flip it and flip it down they're very convenient you guys so, <laughs> so everyone can inspired to do their own i'm so excited so i know everyone's been inspired to do this inlay you guys you saw it right here. It was fun, and I really didn't know what I was doing. It was all trial and error, so the worst is over. Don't forget, Ani did all the trial and error, so pretty much I gave birth to the child, and now you get to play with it. That's pretty much what has happened. So you guys, so stay, remember you guys, don't forget to post a before, before. Did I say a before? Take a picture of the before and then post an after. And you guys, when you guys take a picture of the befores, I really want you guys to make sure that you get a good focus. You know, Yarrow is Mr. Perfection. And he, uh, one picture that I think is perfect, he goes, it's blurry. And I'm like, what do you mean it's blurry? However, it is blurry. So just before you take that picture, make sure you tap on your screen to get a good, a good, um, on the tap on the actual item. So look, if we're taking a picture, hold on, let's do this. So you guys see how I'm taking a picture of this? So just make sure that this focuses and always, yeah, so tap on the item to make sure it focuses. And if there's a lot of busyness in the background, try to find something that is less busier, like, you know, maybe something like this, and then tap on it to get, yeah. Uh -huh. And then if you have the two times zoom, you can do that, but again, tap on it to make sure it focuses and you get a better, you see that, how pretty that is. Hold on. It's not focused, hold on. Too close. I'm too close. So that's another thing, you guys can get too close. So there you go. So there you go. You guys see how crisp this is? That's what I'm talking about. It's not the greatest, okay. Social Media 101, I'll help you guys. We should do a whole class. <gasps> we should do a whole video, like a live, and I'll show you all my tips and tricks of what app I use, what I do, how I make the picture brighter, how I bring the contrast out to make it like a gazam, you know? One of those things. I should do. I love it. Heidi Monta said she missed the beginning because she was working on crushed turquoise inlay. <gasps> However, there's a there's a bracelet that Heidi sent me. Heidi, I want to attempt to do this and show everyone what you did. So Heidi sent me this picture. You guys look at this. So she says this was a whole hum boring cup. You guys see that? And so she says, let me try to change it from a one note. So at first she put the satin finish, and you see the center 
where it's a satin finish. And then she says, hmm, it's still a one note. So she took the uh, heavy chocolate uh, grinding. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Heavy duty grinding. Uh, Happy Father's Day. Hold on. People are commenting. Sorry. Get off there. Um, and so she went ahead and put this texture right on the edge right here. Do you guys see that right here? And then on this side too. So Heidi, so while you were sending me this and sending the thing about Father's Day, I showed my dad this cuff. And my dad went, I like this. The different textures makes your eye follow. And he said everything that I've been saying to you guys to change it from the one note. You see, I get it from him. He's the voice in my head, you guys, like the really, because I would be so excited. I'd create something. I show it to my dad and he'd be like, mm, yeah, go do something else with it. And then you're like, well, do something else with it. What, what am I going to do with it? And so then your creative juices start flowing and you're like, let me try this. Let me try this. So. I appreciate the, so it helps to have a mentor. So if I can be the voice inside your head, because this is what Heidi said, literally right after this, she said, I love it. She says, this was a plane here. I'm going to show your message, Heidi. No one cares. It's fine. So she says, this was a plain ho-hum brass cuff. I needed to be dressed, want a sand finish, but your words, more than one note kept coming to my mind. So I had a texture using the sides, using my favorite espresso. She calls them espresso the chocolate. And then it reminds me of the frost creeping across the window from the edges of the winter. If you remember your days from Michigan, for the sand finish, she used her two inch 80 radio brush. Hope you can uh, see what I'm talking about. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? I like this. So whatever inspirations that come to you, you know, use it. use it. So I actually was inspired by Heidi's cup. And I actually want to try this texture on an upcoming show wouldn't you guys like to see like a different variation we can come up or copy hers <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> i'm joking you know what no matter what you try to copy your variation is always going to be unique to your own trust and believe your hands work in a different motion and then you're like i like mine better huh you know what i mean so i love this experimenting Yes, Nicole Richie also brought a parallel that her father also looks over, inspects her pieces, and she says when he doesn't, he can't detect any solder marks. She can take a breathe, uh, bre uh, breathe. Uh, she can take, breathe she can breathe again. I'm pretty much in uh, doing it, uh, reenacting the scene. So I understand. It's true. It's like I'm showing my dad this ring at, at the dinner table, and he's like analyzing it, analyzing it, analyzing it. And then he's like, hmm, money. I, I, I could see how it's going to work, but that bezel is really thin. And you guys, no joke, the bezel is really thin, you know? But the jewel tool, that's the thing. You guys can do this and freak everyone out because the jewel tool was very gentle at grinding that. And our technique that we discovered with the super glue anchoring in the smaller pieces and the epoxy on top, holding everything together, you know, as, as you're working was a really good benefit. So use that technique, you guys. Honestly, my reason, I think the reason why that little piece flew off was because, and I'm going to tell you guys this, and I thought about it during my show, but I said, Ugh, I'll just let it go. Remember when I polished it? I polished the wire, and I showed you guys how to polish the wire. If I had an inkling of uh, compound that was lodged somewhere, that's enough reason for the epoxy not to grab in one spot enough to flick off. Plain and simple. So if you're going to do the inlay and polish the wire before, wipe it down, wash it, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, do whatever you have to do because you saw me. I was on air. I didn't have time to clean it. I didn't do I just wiped it. So honestly, I think that was the reason why that happened. Uh, but it's okay. Oh, Margaret said, what gauge is a bezel? Yaro, can you, Barbara, can you measure it? I uh, Just a millimeter gauge. Do you have a, no, 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 just tell me right real quick. Oh, we don't know where our millimeter gauge is. I don't know, but it's, it's a good. Okay, so if you guys size, 
it would be just under one size. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? If you guys are sizers, so this is the size chart, you guys. So it's under, as you can see, it's under, where am I? There am I. It's under uh, one size. So this, this is about a three quarter of a size. I don't know. Does, do you guys know? Yeah, I would say I would say two millimeters from just my eye measurement. I would say two millimeters. That's pretty, pretty. That's pretty narrow. And don't forget, the two millimeters is the entire width from the base to the top. Don't forget, we still have a base, the thickness of the sheet underneath the um, the bezel. So we probably have, if we're lucky, one and a half millimeters to uh, of crushed turquoise that we needed to fill. Brr, that's really cutting it thin. But this shows you what you can do. I totally pushed it to the limits, you guys, and did a one and a half millimeter deep bezel and put inlay. That was pretty cool. Well, that's good too, because if you have more, like I would say, expensive stones and you want to inlay, you don't have to have a lot of you know that stone. You know what I mean? So if you ha just have a small amount of stone and you do an inlay, that would be a great way to do it too. And you should also clean the inside. But we remember we scored it. So all the tips and te techniques are all on my videos, you guys. And I'm just really pleased with the results. So I appreciate you guys taking uh, coming along for the journey. I couldn't have done it without you guys. I love you so much. Um, is there any other questions that you guys might have? My Father's Day sale is still alive. Um, I, it's still on, and you get free shipping over 149, and a lot of the items are discounted, and those little flip magnifiers are available online as well. Uh, what else? Uh huh. And those of you guys that missed it last week, I unveiled my um, my mini magic buffs. So these come already pre-mounted. These are also on sale, just in case you missed it. So these are the mini magic buffs that go on your flex shop. All right. Yeah. So we're all set, you guys. I'll see you guys here tomorrow. You guys have given given me a lot of ideas for the shows. So I'm just going to pr pretty much pick one tomorrow and do it. And don't forget, follow me on all these. Li where am I? This side, this side, this side, this side. <laughs> right here. On, and you guys are being active, huh? You guys on Instagram, I see you guys. I see all your likes. I see everything. So kudos to all you guys that are posting all your before and afters. I'm showing them to so many people, even behind the scenes. Like I, s I speak to some, you know, colleagues of mine, and I show off all your work. It's like I'm like the proud mama with her kids. Look what my kid can do. She's better than your kid. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. So I'm just the uh, uh, sharer. So keep them coming. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys here tomorrow. Bye for now, and I'm so excited we did it. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Can we hang on? <laughs> I love it. We did it. It came out so good. All right, bye, you guys.